Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time watching, my name is Derek Davis. I post on YouTube fairly regularly. Uh, last video that I posted was in this corner right here, where I talk about FX's rendition of A Christmas Carol. So if you want to hear my rant about that, go ahead and watch that video. Um, it has nothing to do with this video, although I do reference the Christmas Carol quite a few times, because that was, well, I'll get into it later. So, <clears throat> in today's video, I decided to take part in a survey slash a statistics thing based off my Goodreads, which I also have a link to my Goodreads down in the description. And the survey, um, I found this through watching Murphy Napier, who um, went through her 2019 stats and survey answers. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through my stats from Goodreads in 2019 and what I'm expecting to do in 2020 this year. So, one of the things that I decided to do this year is starting up more consistently, of course, a uh, book journal where I just record kind of stats like where I'm at in the books I'm reading as well as like my thoughts and any quotes that stick out to me. So I recorded um, most of my answers in here, but I decided, you know, without, you know, with more reflection that there was more that um, I could have put it put in. And I just realized kind of going through my inconsistency in this journal, I neglected to write down my finish date for Hesse Siddhartha. So when I'm done with this video, I'm going to, I got, I need to write that down. I'd like to have that in here. So, my Goodreads stats in survey. I'm just going to use the journal for the stats because I have changed my mind on a few answers on here and I selected the questions that applied. Some of the questions in the original survey didn't really apply to me, so I left them out, obviously. So, my Goodreads stats, I read a total of 33 books. And I read a total of 10,815 pages. For contemporary fiction, I read five books. For classical works, I read six books. And nonfiction was 22 books. I read way more nonfiction than I did contemporary fiction and classical from last year. Which I was not really surprised by because I was also um, putting in Goodreads some of the textbooks that I was reading when I was um, doing online classes. So that's why that number is so dang high. And what I want to do, and, and this is kind of like an OCD thing of me, an anxiety thing, I want to make sure everything is like relatively balanced. Like I want a good amount of fiction, and I want a good amount of nonfiction. And within that fiction sub, I want, I put in the classical stuff in there as well. So I want to get that a little bit more balanced, but I realize that might not happen. However, it could because of the way that I read. What I do usually is I will I'll read like a fiction book like for instance I'm reading actually I am reading fiction I just picked this up towards the end of last year Dobby and Son by Charles Dickens and I am on page 175 out of like a 800 900 page tome so that's pretty good I think so far to start out the year by reading one of my absolute favorite writers. In particular, my favorite Victorian writer. I read so much classic anyway. So, yep, those were the stats that I did. So let's get actually get into the survey. So it starts out by asking how many books you read, which I talked about. I only did one reread, and that was of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. I had a first read it back in elementary school and as much as I loved the book I hadn't picked it up for a really really long time until last year I decided and I posted this on my social media that I want to make December every December a reread of A Christmas Carol because it's my absolute favorite and I even like watching the uh, Hollywood versions of it and as I said earlier I also reviewed a little bit ranted a little mostly about what FX did with A Christmas Carol. So if you want to check that out, like I said, I have the I have the link to that video up in the corner and there will also be a link in the description. 
So best book you read in 2018. For me, the best book that I read in 2018 was Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. What I really, really liked about this book is that it was such a great time for me. Um, basically why I liked this book a lot was because of the spiritual journey that our main character goes through. I really connected with that and it was just, it's just an overall a really amazingly great story. So that was my best book of 2019. The book I was excited about and thought I was going to love more but I didn't. Um, <laughs> I kind of ranted a little bit in my review on Goodreads, and I th and I even contacted the author because he happens to be a friend of mine. That book would be Organized Chaos by Cass Swenson. Reason why I um, was really excited about reading it, number one, well, mostly because a friend had written this book. And I thought I was going to love it because I enjoy, I do like reading about, well, not I really mostly watch documentaries on conspiracy theories, and that's why I thought I would absolutely love this book, because I I enjoy watching doc documentaries on conspiracy theories. But as it turned out, I really didn't care much about this book. I did like it, but not to the point where it was 5 out of 5. If I remember right, I rated it a 3 out of 5, because... There were a few inconsistencies, there were a few grammar issues, and it kind of just not really ruined my reading experience, but it didn't make it very enjoyable. So our next question. Most surprising in a good way or a bad way book that I read? I would say for this one, it's kind of a back and forth. It was, um... Either Bullies by Ben Shapiro, but what really won my surprising read would be The Diversity Delusion by Heather MacDonald. And the reason why it was so surprising is because it just opened my eyes a little bit more to what's going on in our nation. And it, the author exposes like a lot of things that are not very great, but see, on the surface look okay. So, that was my most surprising book. I didn't push people to read anything, because that's not the kind of person I am. Uh, the best series that I started in 2019 was the John Matherson series, and unfortunately, I don't have all three books. It's a trilogy. However, I do have... I do have the second and the third book in the series. Um, it starts out with one second after, and it's just setting up, it's an apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic story, sets up the story. And then, the second book is one year after, which I will talk about again. And the last book in the series, which is the final day. The series was real, is very, very provocative. It's very action-packed, which is something I really liked, and it actually opened me up to a different genre. And I'm pretty sure there's a niche for it, for apocalyptic literature. So I am really, really excited to continue with that series in the last book, which I'll obviously talk about later. Um, in fact, the author, William Forskin, happens to be my favorite new author that I discovered in 2019. And with that first book, the reason I don't have it is because I put it on a donations table. Um, and it kind of gets into my book reading habits. I don't generally keep books that I've read. I like to give them away. You know, contribute. Because, you know, pe people enjoy reading, but some people don't have the, the financial resources to go out and buy a book. So the best way to do it is to donate and sell it for as cheap as I possibly can. Um, best book from a genre you don't typically read was out of your comfort zone. I c was kind of, when I was doing the, um, the survey in my journal, I was kind of going back and forth because I just mentioned post-apocalyptic literature being a new genre that I started. But, I also started a completely different genre that I had not read before by reading social commentary, and that's where diversity delusion comes into play. 
in, in particular, um, conservative social commentary. I find I'm finding myself agreeing with a few things in that, and there are things that I disagree with, in particular Ben Shapiro and a few things that he, uh, that he believes in. I don't necessarily agree with him on that. Most action-packed, thrilling, unputtownable book of the year. Um, again, going back to Ton Matheson series, the most... <laughs> the most packed one was this. And I actually wrote about it in my blog on Goodreads about why it's so action-packed. There's a scene in here, without revealing too much, um, basically a lot of people are sick. They're, they're, they've been harmed. And there's this boy, and he's gripping his sister, and she, he doesn't know she's dead. And there's this scene, and I kind of, and I kind of feel bad about it now, and I might edit it out later, but I said, God, um, look what God can do. And then he sees his dead sister's body, and he just loses it completely. And it just doesn't end very well, and I just found myself reading it just really torn apart, and it was just so depressing, but at the same time, very well written. The book I read in 2018 that I would most likely reread next year, I'm not a huge rereader, uh, however, I have decided in the year 2020, again in December, to reread A Christmas Carol, and I also am planning, and I kind of started, rereading Harry Potter. I've kind of discovered the joy of audiobooks. I had two credits on Audible, so I chose Philosopher's Stone and uh, Chamber of Secrets um, for the two credits. Um, and when my next free credit comes around, I'll, I'll pick up Prisoner of Mass Command and so on and so forth until I've completed the U.S. version of Harry Potter. Now, I was bored one night and I found um, an edition of Harry Potter... Uh, the original edition of Harry Potter, so, you know, um, basically. And I'm like, okay, so it's going to have the British slang in it, and I really want to read it in the way that Rowling had originally wrote it, not the U.S. version of it. So I'm really excited to get into that. Favorite cover of a book I read in 2018? Um, dang. I don't really care for covers, to be honest. Like, yeah, covers kind of entice me a little bit to pick up a book and get it. But what real, obviously what really seals, seals the deal is what's written on the back of a book. I will say, however, that my favorite cover in 2019, Charles Maturin's Melmoth Wonder, the Oxford World's Classic Edition. It's a really provocative cover. I kind of have a thing for, like, dark colors, so I go, go with that. So that was my favorite cover, most memorable character. I would say John Matherson, again, from his book series. Most beautifully written book, read in 2018, would be Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. Same with uh, most thought-provoking, life-changing book of 2018. Um, I'm kind of battling with this one between Siddhartha and also Matthew Vine's God and the Gay Christian. The reason why this was very thought-provoking is because this hits home with me, and I read this at a really opportune time, and it just made my faith stronger. It just changed my life, to be honest. Like, I knew a lot of the stuff in the book, but the author was is really good at explaining things, which I really appreciated in God and the Gay Christian. Book you can't believe you waited until 2019 to finally read? I couldn't really answer that. Your favorite favorite passage or quote from a book you read in 2019? I don't really have anything for that either. The shortest and the longest book you read in 2018? The shortest, and I don't have it anymore, Straining at the Oars. It was a book that I read for class. And the longest book I read was Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. And I no longer have that book either. So, book that shocked me the most, The Diversity Delusion. Um, because I was unaware of a lot of th the things that were going on, that are going on in this country. And so I was just really shocked to read some of these things. Like, um, I don't want to get up and look at the book. I'm so lazy. 
uh, one of the things that MacDonald points out is that, oh, so, completely unaware of this, I think I said that maybe three times now, um, was this student who was upset that she had to read Chaucer, that she had to read Dickens, because they're all white writers. And the author points out that these are poignant writers. They were very important to literature and what shaped literature fo immediately following these authors. And I just remember reading it. That's so ignorant to completely write off these amazing writers that have paved the way for writers to come. How... Uh, I'll listen to there. OTP of the year. Um, I don't really do ships. Uh, favorite book you read in 2019 from an author you've read previously. Um, I'm just going to go back with William Forston on that one. Because I didn't do a whole lot of rereading from older authors, except for Dickens, of course. Best book you read in 2019 that you read based solely on a recommendation from somebody else. I can't really answer that. Fictional crush from a book you've read. I don't really fall in love with my main characters, so... Or any character from a book. Can't answer that one. Best 2019 debut you've read. I, I mostly read classics and books that have, um... They're a little bit older, so I can't really answer that. Book that put a smile on your face was the most fun to read. Um... Yeah, I can't really answer that one either. Book that made me cry or nearly cry. I'm going back to One Year After because of that scene with the boy and his sister. I mean, they're young, they were young kids. That's why I was crying, which I barely do when I read. Now, I do it a lot with movies, but not with books. Hidden Gem of the Year. I would say discovering the post-apocalyptic fiction books. Book that crushed my soul. The John Matherson series. The most unique book you read in 2019. That'd be Organized Chaos again. The book that made me the most mad. And, I, again, I got rid of the book. Ben Shapiro's Bullies. That made me the most mad. Um, new favorite book, blog, bookstagram, YouTube channel that I discovered in 2019. Jesse the Reader. I really enjoy his content. He is absolutely hilarious. Just a very captivating YouTuber. I really, really, really generally love that, that man's work. The favorite post I wrote in 2018. Uh, favorite post that I wrote in 20, oh, excuse me, 2019. Um, the heading went something like Linda Ronstadt. No, the song Teardrops Will Fall is not just a Linda Ronstadt song. Um, and that kind of just goes back to the book that made me cry. Favorite bookish related photo I took in 2018, if I could do photos, and I am so cheap. I'm not able to put photos up here, but it was of my bookcase when I was setting it up. The best bookish event, I didn't participate in any best moment of bookish blogging life in 2019. Don't really have that either. Most popular post this year on my blog. I don't think anyone reads it, so. Post that I wish got a little more love. All of them. Best bookish discover. Sarah Pel Perry's Melmoth the Wanderer. Oh, excuse me, just Melmoth. Because it was based off my favorite classic of 2019, which was Melmoth. Um... I don't know how I found it, but when I found out that this writer, Sarah Perry, had done a modern take on it, I took the opportunity, and I grabbed the book, and I ran. I didn't steal it, but boy, I wanted this book after finding out there was that Melmoth the Wanderer had a modern take on it. I thought it was one of those obscure books that would never be mentioned ever again, but it turns out it did make an impact. Did you complete any reading challenges or goals that you had set for yourself at the beginning of 20... 
19. And I had started out my Goodreads goal by saying I wanted to read at least 30 books, and I did pass it by 5. Okay, now looking ahead, one book you didn't get to in 2019, but is going to be your number one priority in 2020. This whole shelf. <laughs> in particular, what I really want to set a priority for is Stephen King's book, It. It's really huge. This is probably going to be the biggest book, biggest page amount in this year. I'm just really excited because I had seen both the original film and I saw the remake uh, parts one and two and I just love the story and I just I just feel the need. I, I just need to read it. I just, it's just, yep, I just I just gotta read it. Book you're most anticipating for in 2020, non-debut. Um, that would be either It Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say books. I'm, I'm cheating. It's going to be these two that, that, um, that I'm most anticipating for. Not my pit. Because we like horror. Alright. I don't really have a 2020 to be my most anticipating. I'm kind of boring. I don't really keep up. I know I should. Um, thanks to a lot of the booktubers that I've been watching, that's kind of helping me a little bit with um, stuff, but I have yet to even read their recommendations. Um, I do know, however, I do have Crystal Smith's Bloodleaf on, my, on the third shelf in my bookcase, um, which I'm also looking, really looking forward to reading, and I know that the sequel's coming out, so I'll just say the sequel to that, whatever it is. Series ending, a sequel you're most anticipating in 2020. Um, kind of modifying this question a little bit, I'm really looking forward to, um, finishing up with the John Matherson series, just to see how, what's happened, what's gonna happen in the, at the, at the end of that book. And then one thing you hope to accomplish or do in your reading, blogging life in 2019. Be more consistent. The 2020 release you've already read and recommend to everyone, and that's not applicable. That's the end of this survey. So yeah, I am super excited to get to some amazing, amazing, amazing books in 2020. So yeah, um, I just want to end it with something that I was so excited to get in the mail the other day. I had ordered book coasters from Book Riot because I have a headboard and I want to keep it in great condition and I don't want the headboard to be ruined. So I picked up this really cheap set of book coasters. This first one Read Harder. I like this one too. Read More Books. This brings up the horror fan in me. Read or Die. And then last but not least, the Book Riot logo. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at it. Look at it. Behold its gloriousness. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, um, follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, Goodreads, I have the links down below. Thank you so much for watching this, and remember to always stay humble and please be kind.